I'm CJ, this is the Amish Potato, and this presentation is brought to you by Basement Utility Room Studios. While I was still living in that Amish community, one of the questions I asked the most was, what makes us right and everybody else wrong? Why are we the only right ones and everybody, you know, everybody else thinks they're right, but we're right? How's that work? Now, Amish people, when asked, will not say that they are the only right religion, that they are the only ones going to heaven. Um, they will say that other people will go to heaven too. But as I've shared in my preacher video, they think they are living more biblically than anybody else. And the only reason other people are going to heaven is because they don't know any better. They think that the Amish religion is the most accurate biblically, and since we know better, we were raised there, we know better, we need to stay there and live that way of life. Otherwise, if we leave, we'll go to hell. So in a roundabout way, they say they are the most right religion, the most accurate religion. And, and that's what, where my questioning came in as well. We think, as Amish people, we think we're the most accurate religion, but Muslims think they're the most accurate ones. Catholics think they, are the, they got it right. LDS think they have it right. So, so if all these different groups think they all have it right and are sure they have it right, which one is right? Because they can't all be right, right? Um, so now that I'm out of the Amish community and I'm on YouTube and I'm in the public eye, I make claims that I'm right, that my beliefs are right, and, and, and all those religions are wrong. How can I do that? And it seems kind of contradictory <laughs> to what I was questioning, right? You know, and I, I've gotten the question like, well, why, why do you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? Like, what kind of ego do you have or what makes your church right and every other church wrong? Well, it's really very simple. Um, I know I'm right because of what the Bible says. So it's not really me. It's <clears throat> I'm just going by what God says. So my beliefs hinge solely on what Scripture says. And I can point at the Amish, point at the LDS Church, at the Catholic Church, at um, Scientology, um, Muslims. And I can point out, and, and not just me, but I've learned through so many other people, but point out where they are not following what Scripture says. You know, it all comes back to sola scriptura, the scripture as our final authority. One thing I want to throw in here that I left out in the original shoot is, um, and I don't know how I missed this, but all the false religions that I've studied even just a little bit, they all require works to be saved. They all depend on your performance. Islam, uh, the Mormons, the LDS Church, Amish, I think a lot of Mennonites, um, Hutterites, any false religion just require it requires works to be saved. It require it depends on your performance, how well you stay out of sin and all that. So I've noticed that throughout my studies, and and another thing I've noticed is all false religions have uh, something they go to, a person or another book or something that trumps the Bible that you know, is, is takes authority over the Bible. So, for instance, the LDS Church has the prophet or the Book of Mormon that is, is held as a higher authority than the Bible. So if, so if the Book of Mormon and the Bible say something different, they go by the Book of Mormon or they go by the prophet. Um, and like the in Islam, you know, they have the Quran, which trumps Scripture, or they have... Uh, you know, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have their own Bible, but they change some things in it. And, um, and you might think, well, what about the Amish? They don't, they use the Bible. Uh, and they do, but they have uh, forefathers. They keep going back to the forefathers. Well, this is what our forefathers taught. This is what we're going to teach. So they have a lot of things that their forefathers believed and taught that contradict Scripture. You know, works being one of them, or knowing that you're saved being another one. Um, and there's, there's others. I just can't think of them right now. But the truth is that no, you don't need a church to be saved, right? If you're thinking right now, am I going to go to heaven or am I going to go to hell when I die? How do I go to heaven? 
You know, what church do I need to go to? Salvation doesn't require church. Now, you need to go to church because you need the fellowship and you need the teaching and all that. But the way to get saved is by recognizing that you are a sinner and that the punishment for that sin is death, eternal death, hell, right? And when you recognize that, you see, you see that you need a Savior. And then you see that Savior in Jesus Christ. So you repent, repent from your old ways and you put your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did. And he, uh, he died on the cross for you. He took that death for you so that you don't have to die. He forgave you of all your sins. Um, you know, Colossians 2 talks about him forgiving you all your trespasses, taking them, nailing them to the cross, and dying with them. So... Your sins are forgiven. And all you do is all you do have to do is put faith in that and believe that. And then know that you're going to heaven. Church is simply uh, a place to go learn and grow in that relationship with Christ and to fellowship with other believers and to then serve your Lord and Savior Jesus. All false religions require um, performance to be saved, right? To go to heaven. It's always performance, your works. Uh, and, and that's simply just a false teaching. All those religions, those different religions, do not follow Scripture. And we can point, we can point out where they are contradicting what Scripture says, right? So the reason I know that what I believe and what other people like me believe is the truth and is is the only right way is because it's what Scripture says. Yeah, you know, it's it's really that simple. That's clear and plain in Scripture. How can you argue against that, right? You can't. So when you do attend church, you need to be questioning everything the pastor's saying and comparing it to Scripture. And if he's saying something that's not according to Scripture, then you need to approach the pastor with it, right? You need to go, hey, look, you said this, Scripture says this. What's going on? And, and your pastor should encourage you to do so. If he doesn't, then or doesn't like to be questioned, then get out of that church. It's that simple. You know, you should be able to question him, and then he will, when you have a question about something, he'll say, well, this is why I taught this way, because I believe this and this and this, right? And if it's still off, then get out. Or, you know, maybe it'll he'll explain what he was teaching, and you'll be like, oh, okay, now I understand. That's how it should be. I love Calvary chapels. We attend a Calvary chapel. I know a lot of people don't because they're, you know, a more of a, um, they're a non-denominational church. They're more of a free, relaxed church. Uh, but I love them because they teach scripture um, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, right? And, and that doesn't, you can't skip verses <laughs> or it will be noticed, right? The pastor can't avoid certain subjects because people will notice. And, you know, topical preaching is fine, but it's it just leaves room for avoiding certain topics. Uh, that's why I love going to churches. I think I don't think I would attend a church that doesn't teach verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. People will say, well, you can interpret Scripture differently. And um, that's just a load of crap. I'm sorry. There are the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, you know, that the deity of Christ, you know, the fact that he rose again, you know, the Virgin Mary, the, um, there's, there's things in the Bible that are very, very clear. There's the essential things that you have to believe in to be a Christian. And then there's the non-essentials, right? The, the non-essentials, the eschatology that, uh, fellow Christians disagree on and that the Bible isn't hundred percent clear on it. There's arguments for either way and that's okay. That's okay. As long as we agree on the essentials. Now, all these false religions, they don't agree on all the essentials. And that's why they are a false religion. Because they get some things that the Bible is very clear on, they ignore or contradict in their beliefs. I attend a Calvary Chapel. We are not the only <laughs> right church. There are many churches, different churches, that believe, have the same essential beliefs that we do. Um, but there are a lot of false churches out there that claim the name of Christianity, that do not believe in the essentials. Yep, I can claim that I am right. It's not because I am smarter, not because I know more, not because I'm better than anybody else. It's because I, I can point you towards scripture and say, 
that's what it says. So you're not disagreeing with me, you're disagreeing with scripture. Find a good church, find a good pastor, question what he's teaching, compare it to scripture, and you are on your way to the truth. I am CJ. This is the Amish Potato. We will see you next time.